Now let's take a look at converting polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So the instructions say convert the polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So in other words, convert r comma theta to x comma y. And so the approach that I will take is I will try to draw this point and solve the problem, OK? So let's see if we can plot this point. We've got a setup like this. I like to use my theta value first. So I need to rotate from 0 to 2 pi over 3. So here's 1 pi over 3. Here's 2 pi over 3. So my theta is going to land me over here approximately. So this is my 2 pi over 3, meaning that I have a pi over 3 reference angle right here, OK? Or 60 degree reference angle, either way. So that's my theta, which gives me a reference angle inside my right triangle. And then I know that my r value is 6, so that means my hypotenuse, my, my distance from the origin, is 6. So that means my hypotenuse, so I rotate to this terminal side, and I walk 6 units away from my origin, so my hypotenuse is 6 units. And what I need to know is my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate. Notice that my x-coordinate is left, so it's a negative number. And my y-coordinate is up, so it's a positive number. OK, so we're going to keep that in mind. Because when we work in the context of reference triangles, everything's positive, OK? I'll make a note of that over here for you. All the sides are positive. So it's important to keep track of which sides are negative when you're actually taking the reference triangle and putting it into the coordinate plane, OK? so. Let's work on this triangle to see if we can figure it out. We'll kind of blow it up here. I know that this is my, <coughs> excuse me, 60 degree angle or pi over 3. Let's call it 60 degrees. Why not? I know my hypotenuse is 6, and I need to know this side, and I need to know this side. <coughs> excuse me. Now, one cool thing uh, that can be taken away from this process is a shortcut for finding the the legs of your right triangle when you know the hypotenuse and an angle. This side on the bottom is adjacent to the 60 degree angle. So an easy way to calculate the adjacent side is to take the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle 60 degrees. Okay? Now you could do this using Sokotoa and you'll, you'll actually come up with this answer. So it's going to be important, I think, for you to learn this, this quick little shortcut for finding the legs of a right triangle. And I can, I can kind of summarize it up here. If you know, so we've got a right triangle. You've got a hypotenuse h. And let's say this angle is theta. Then the side that's adjacent to theta will be the hypotenuse times the, sorry, I said theta bar. I meant just theta. The side that's adjacent to theta will be the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle theta. And the side that's opposite the angle theta will be the hypotenuse h times the sine of the angle theta. So that's a quick little, quick little shortcut for finding the legs of a right triangle if you know the hypotenuse and one of the angles. So here, the hypotenuse is 6 times the cosine of 60 degrees for the adjacent side. And the other side will be the hypotenuse 6 times the co not the cosine, sorry the sine of 60 degrees because it's opposite the 60 degree angle. So if you calculate both of those, the sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So you multiply 6 times the square root of 3 over 2, and you get 3 square roots of 3. That doesn't look much like a 3, does it? 3 square roots of 3. And this side, the cosine of 60 degrees, is 1 half, so you multiply 6 times 1 half, which is simply 3. All right, so now we know our the adjacent side and the opposite side. 
So that tells us over here, x, the adjacent side, is 3 in the negative direction. So x is negative 3. And y is 3 square roots of 3 in the positive direction. So y is 3 square roots of 3. And now we can come up here and answer the question. This polar ordered pair equals the ordered pair negative 3 for x, positive 3 square roots of 3 for y. Okay, very good. Let's try another one. Okay, so this one is fairly simple, but it's also un a bit unique. It's a little different, so I want to make sure we look at it. So this is, we're converting from polar, meaning this is r, this is theta. We're converting from polar to rectangular. So let's draw this point. And sometimes this is tricky. So I need to look at my theta first. 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 is the same thing as 2 and 1 half, because 5 halves is 2 and a half pi. So I rotate to 2 pi. So that's one full rotation. Gets me back here to 2 pi. And then I need to rotate another 1 half pi, which puts me up here. So this is the angle that we're working on, OK? So we're working in this direction. And actually, I'll make that an arrow. Why not? So we're working in this direction. This is 5 pi over 2. OK? But then our r value is negative 1. So I rotate and I face the direction of 5 pi over 2. This is my positive direction. The angle that is given determines your positive axis, your positive direction. So I actually need to walk the other way one unit. So I'm actually going to go down one unit and get this point here. I know this distance here is 1. Okay. So this is the point we're working with. Now what I need to do is convert that point to rectangular. If we look at the last example, the point we had landed in the middle of a quadrant resulting in this right triangle setup. In this problem, this point does not land in the middle of a quadrant. So we cannot draw a right triangle. It's actually much simpler than that. If you consider x and y for this point, well, it's very simple. x is how far left or right you go. So x is 0. You don't move left or right to get to this point. y is how far up or down you go. Well, you've got to go down one unit. So y is negative 1. And that's it. The ordered pair, the rectangular ordered pair for this point, is the ordered pair 0, negative 1. So this one is tricky first because r was negative, and we had to go in the opposite direction of the angle that was provided. The second reason it's tricky is because the point did not land inside a quadrant where we could draw a reference triangle. Okay, So we simply had to realize, oh yeah, x is 0 because I don't move left or right. And y is negative 1 because I can see that I moved down one unit exactly. And that is all there is to this problem.